All right, what is good and saying, gamers? It is your boy, Yo Soy AC Weezy, joined by the man, goddamn T Hayes, repping that Raider Nation, making yeah. me look like a goddamn fool because I'm not wearing any Packers shit. But if you tuned into the Thirsty He's Thursday not a stream real fan, guys. last night, you know, you know what? Fuck it. I'm an owner. I'm not a fan. I'm an owner, bro. Can you be both? I don't know. I might have to just might have to just choose one. What happens if I X that out? Okay, we're still good. There was two of you on the screen for some reason. It was kind of throwing my brain in a little pretzel. Um, shout out. You liked it. Shout out. Uh, yeah, I love pretzels. Nice soft pretzel. What, what do you go? Do you go cheese or mustard with your soft pretzels? Oh, cheese, obviously. See, I feel like mustard is more of an acquired taste because obviously... I, it know, is. I used to do. I used to rock the cheese. I don't know if it's a result of me um, being health conscious and trying to cut out dairy of my diet and bread. Um... But now I gotta rock the mustard. The cheese is just too overpowering for me. It can be salty at times, but I just feel like the cheese just has better texture. You know, if you get a good cheese, I'm saying like you have to get like maybe that homemade cheese, or you can't get that cheese that like comes out of those plastic. Well, that's what I'm talking about, like the Annie Anne's or whatever. Annie, don't be fucking talking dirty about Annie Anne's. (laughs) The pretzels are good. good. No way, dude. Cheese is yeah. Dude, it tastes like the fucking fake cheese that you get out of the the whipped cream can. Theirs is different. I'm saying like the shit that like you would get from a fucking like baseball, little league baseball game. Like it's out of the, the same shit. Class, it's not though. <laughs> Annie Ants has its own thing. Don't be coming at Annie Ants. I'll be coming at your head. Just because you worked across from them in the mall for how long, and you that was ninety percent of your get, diet. I would get a pepperoni pretzel <laughs> with some cheese on it. Sometimes they throw in the cheese for free because I was a, a a top client of theirs. But did you have a like a uh, returning customer card or f- a frequent flyer, if you will. Actually, they used to have those little cards that they would punch, like yeah, Tom yeah, Hanks yeah, yeah. and Polar Express. <laughs> I used to, I used to have those fill up so quick, you'd have no idea. I'd get free pretzels all the time. That's dope. That's dope. Um, got a little bit off topic. Dan Which in the chat. Happened. Dan in the chat. <laughs> mustard. <laughs> of course, he's gonna say mustard. Any, nothing man. else. That's what he said. I agree, Disgusting. Dan. I agree with you, Tyler. Grow up a little bit, Tyler. Come on. Mustard is the the worst condiment out there. Don't do add have, me. Do you happen to have some gray poupon? All right, a little Wayne's World reference. Um, but as I was gonna say, shout out Tom. The new intro videos for all the for all the streams and the podcasts are dope. Um, we get we got the the Raiders the Packers matchup mash up, which I guess we should. Tyler's got the Raiders in the background, but as you saw, Aaron Rodgers. In that opening intro video, Tyler, last night, let's dive right into it because I'm kind of heated about it. And I yeah, you know, go off, Ken. I might not crown. say heated, but I am confused. Right, I'm in an escape room, and all the clues are in a different language. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm watching the draft live last night. I, you know, I'm doing the commentary as stuff's going off. Packers, they got the 30th pick. I was gonna stay up for it. As I'm engaging with the chat because. You know, the community oriented streamer that I am, I want to make, you know, everyone's feeling like, okay, anyways, but I see a trade going off and it says the Packers trade up to the 36 or the 26 spot. I'm like, oh shit, they're going to get, they're going to get Queen from LSU. Just traded away or lost Blake Martinez to the Giants. This guy fits perfectly in the defense. He can come in, get a lot of tackles right off the bat. And what happens they pick Jordan Love, quarterback from Utah State. Now, let me go on record for the second time because, ironically enough, last time or last night in my stream early on, I'm looking at the list, best available. I go to quarterbacks. I say, oh, Jordan Love, potentially the best quarterback in this draft class, Tyler. I know we, we like, the, we like the, the measurables, right? He's tall, big stature, big hands. I don't know Ass. where his, you know, his actual hands compared to mine or his finger length compared to yours, but um, that's to be discussed on another day. But I was in complete shock, Tyler. From what, what do you think from the, you know, the outside perspective, you know, from a fan of another team? Right. I mean, I was shocked myself. Aaron Rodgers said, put it on record. He said it would be nice if we draft a skill player since we haven't drafted one in so long. And they need it. They need, well, you know, they did, to, but it wasn't 
what they, you know, <laughs> the type of skill player that the type of skill player that Aaron Rodgers wants. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it reminded me when they had Brett Favre and they drafted Aaron Rodgers back in 2005, which today is the 15th anniversary of that. Let's us not forget nope. um, Aaron Rodgers being drafted. I know you did. I'm just saying it wasn't said, so I'm saying it. Um, did they do it to out Aaron Rodgers? You know, be, being 15 years ago, he got drafted. I don't know, but. As a fan of a different team looking at the Packers, I was kind of like, what the hell are you guys doing? Because I think Aaron Rodgers has a lot left where when it was Brett Favre, he did not. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, like, no, I feel like for sure. I feel like Brett Favre didn't he had he didn't have the caliber that Aaron Rodgers has. I feel like Aaron Rodgers is a much better quarterback uh than Brett Favre ever was. Yep. I just I that's how I feel. And I think that he has Aaron Rodgers can play five more years given the opportunity. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm going to go on record by saying I am a Packers fan, first and foremost, right? Obviously, you get tied to players, especially, you know, a guy like Aaron Rodgers, won you a Super Bowl, he's been with the organization for so long. But at the end of the day, the first love of my football life was the Green Bay Packers. You know, I, I started out watching Brett Favre. I was sad to see him leave. And then Aaron Rodgers came along. So, you know, I'm kind of using that as a reference. Um, like I said, I believe Jordan Love could possibly be the... Oh, you got the McDonald's joint going on in the background now. <laughs> Some but, ad. But no free ads. No ads. Block him, no block him. <laughs> oh! Hello! He's not wearing pants. Um, but so I see, you know, I see the business side of it. And although, you know, Brian Gutekunst, the GM said you yeah, know we we keep on sense. we keep on uh we think Aaron Rodgers has a few years left we'll have him here for a while so i don't know and it it was interesting i saw a, a clip you know i was watching they had the stream up on twitch with some of the guys and Brett Favre was on one of them and he said hey you know i was talking to Aaron the other day and he's saying no i know how you feel you know when when i got drafted coming in another another quarterback and Maybe you felt like your career wasn't quite over yet, but you know you gotta you gotta groom these guys, you know. And if you think if the Packers organization thinks that you know Jordan Love could be the guy of the future, then what better mentor than Aaron Rodgers to kind of bring in the next generation? And as a Packers fan, I'm not gonna be upset, you know, as long as there's no animosity internally within the organization. I'd like to think. Aaron Rodgers was privy to this pick. Not sure about that, but I just as long as everyone's on the same page and you know they they want the same they want the best for the organization. I, I'm happy about it. Yeah, I mean, I would say he, in my eyes, Jordan Love was the third best quarterback in that in this draft. Um, I mean, granted, oh. I feel like the Packers looking looking at it now. I feel like the Packers could have easily got him in the second round maybe going after someone else that would help the offense a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I would say the best quarterbacks in this draft, number one obviously being Joey Buckets, being drafted number one. I think coming off probably Don't the agree. best – I agree 100%. Coming off the best college season any quarterback's ever had, um, I think he, he – they are comparing him to, to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's he's that good. And then I think Justin Herbert being the second best quarterback in the draft – um, then Jordan Love. I just think they've reached a little too much from an outside perspective, not as a Packers fan. I just feel like they reached. Well, okay, so yeah, at the end of the day, and we'll, we'll, we'll squash that, the Packers talk for now after this. At the end of the day, I was, yeah, mostly just upset that they traded up for him as I feel like maybe they could have made some moves in, you know, early second round, still got him. Right. Took, you know, took Queen, which I thought that would have been the good pick there. But going back to the quarterback talk, Tyler, my rankings, pre-draft, post-draft, before the season, number one, Jordan Love. And I said this before, so don't even say, oh, that's biased. Two, Justin it's Herbert. Biased. Two, Justin Herbert. And then I'll go Joe Burrow. Because a lot for me, I'm talking about, first and foremost, skill-wise, as the quarterback position, how it translates to the NFL – but also, Tyler, you look at these guys. Look at Aaron Rodgers, right? He sat behind Brett Favre. Even T 
Tom Brady was behind um, Bledsoe for a little bit, right? Steve Young was behind Montana. You can't throw guys. It's very rare you throw guys into a, a dumpster fire organization like the Cincinnati Bengals. Or, you know, you look at Jameis Winston, Mariota. You know, the Titans weren't that good at the time. It's tough to be put in a in a tough situation like that and flourish. So I just don't, I don't know. You know, look at Baker. They tried to get as much help for him as possible. He's still, he's still not going along. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I just also feel like Cincinnati is not a, a dumpster fire like you say. I think given the right, given the right coach, how not? I feel, how not? Tyler? Well, I mean, look at look at what uh, Mel Kuyper said. They've had six. 10 win seasons in the past, you know, since 2000, which How I mean, many playoff wins? I, I mean, Zero? <laughs> I'm saying success. I'm saying success. They've had more 10 win seasons than the 49ers. They've had more 10 win seasons than, you know, he listed off a few different other organizations. I wouldn't say they're a dumpster fire. I, I would say they have, they have the players there. They have AJ green, obviously coming off of, of a injury. They have, I mean, who else do they have a wide receiver? They have what's Tyler his face? Boyd. Tyler Boyd, who's a good player. Her, um, Tyler Boyd, yeah. Then they got, yeah, Tyler they got Boyd. Eifert still. They got Eifert, who you know, that guy might Whatever. as well just retire. He's yeah. not that great, but his back you know, is like you're fucking. not you're not you're not going to expect a guy like Joey Burrows to come in and be MVP first season. You know they're going to build around him. I think I think he has the talent. I like what he's done. He's proven himself against the best of the best. You know, especially Alabama, especially against Clemson. I mean, you, you you want that guy. That's the guy that you strive to be. But I do see what you're saying. Um, you know, classic SEC quarterbacks coming out never usually translate well to the NFL. But hmm. I think he might be an exception. No, and I, yeah, I feel like quarterback is, I am being a little contradictory because last night on the stream I was saying, when in doubt, you know, if, if you're in between a couple guys, go the SEC route because, you know, they're playing against other NFL caliber players but at the same time tell you you sound you sure not you sure you're not a lions fan because you're talking you're over here talking about regular season and you know being content with 10 win seasons even though you won and out or no wins in the playoffs i'm just saying i don't think it's fair to say that they're a dumpster fire like the browns like the lions like there's other t- there's other organizations out there that are just as worse as as them i think you know the Bengals. They're not as bad as people think that they are. I mean, they've had bad seasons, obviously. They've gone 0 16 before, but I just think they have good players to surround. They definitely have the cap space too to surround around mm-hmm. Joey Buckets. I we'll mean, see. I, no, I wish them all the best. I have no ill will towards them, but it sounds like you do. It sounds like no. you hate the guy. I mean, what do you do? Pissing your Cheerios? Fucking jealous. You see, you see, he says he can. He thinks with practice he could score 12 to 15 points in an NBA game. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah, he's got a nice jump shot, but he's someone's playing man-to-man defense. He's not even touching the ball, but whatever. Um, so you want to just dive into it, go down? Yeah, just go around pick by pick. Yeah, we'll go pick by pick, obviously, and we'll, we'll try to grade them. So first overall... We kind of talked about it. Tyler, I'll let you run with this one because you seem to be a fan. Joe Burrow, first overall pick, went to the Cincinnati Bengals. And you think you think he'll be good this year? You think it'll take him a year? I think it'll take him. I think he'll show sparks of being good, obviously. But, you know, I, he's playing in a tough division. He's going up against the Ravens. He's going up against the mm-hmm. Steelers the, both of, and the Browns, too. All three of those teams have really solid defenses. So he's definitely going to have some games that are going to be tough in, in his own division. So, I mean, I think he'll, he'll, he'll show the— He'll show that he's good enough to play in the NFL. I just don't think this season, you know, maybe they'll have like three or four wins, you know, which is pretty average of a quarterback coming out of the mm-hmm. first round. Um, I think he'll he'll be fine. Do I think he was the best player in the draft? No, I don't. Right, right. I think I think Chase Young was. I think he's the best player out of this draft yeah. for sure, but they didn't need an edge. They needed, you know, a quarterback. Right, yeah, and so I guess we'll, you know, that's one thing we agree on. Chase Young, probably the best overall athlete in the draft. Listen, as I just said, I don't think he was the best or even second best quarterback in the draft. But with that being said, I think he will still do well. 
in Cincinnati, right? They got some young players, and I think Cincinnati, the big thing with them, they've been in a tough division for years, right? Steelers, Ravens, and that other team that has a solid colored helmet. <laughs> but <laughs> I think if they get him, he is a winner. At the end of the day, he is a winner. You know, like you said, he hasn't lost or had a losing season since he was five years old. I think this year will be the first <laughs> losing Obviously, season. Obviously, yeah. But I mean, Kyler Murray didn't have a losing season in yeah. in his whole entire life either. So I mean, the NFL is different. You you oh, understand yeah. that? I yeah. Um, well, I understand it personally. I would have gone pro if it wasn't for the bum knees. But mm, very with the, true. With that being said, no, I think he'll be all right. They just the the Bengals need to change. Maybe some some leader guys over there. They just need a new culture. You know, they had the Pac Man Jones. They had the Perfect in there. Just kind of. Just kind of mucking up the locker room a little bit. But, yeah, so number two, and I'll start with this one, Chase Young, I think the best overall athlete in this draft. And as I said last night on my stream, it wasn't a sexy draft, Tyler. You know, there was a few res- big-name receivers. Um, you know, you had Burrow and Tua, right, at the quarterback position. But other than that, like, how, how many? Six, seven offensive linemen, you know, two cornerbacks both you know from Ohio State that went off the board but Chase Young goes to goes to the Redskins who they need a lot of help um that division's somewhat wide open i f- i feel like at least but you know overall athlete wise i think i think he can come in you know like a Miles Garrett type guy make a immediate impact what do you think no i think the, my favorite quote from t- that night about Chase Young was they asked him what position he plays. He put. He says, "I play defense." So I think this guy he adds a lot of versatility to um, to defense because he can play just about damn near every position. Um, he's a once in a lifetime talent, kind of similar to Cleo Mack, I would say. Um, he's a guy that you that comes into the game. He's going to change, you know, the game, especially playing in the NFC East. I mean, you're going to go up against the the Giants. Not that great. You know, they added a little bit of a line. We'll get into that, obviously. Yeah. Um, you're facing the Cowboys, who lost a lot of linemen this year. Um, uh, Frederick got retired. Um, they lost two linemen in free agency. So they're kind of having some holes in their offensive line that they're going to have to fill. Um, and then they got the Eagles. You know, the Eagles are hit or miss. So I think he mm-hmm. can make an immediate impact for the Redskins. I don't think they're going to go to the playoffs. Right. But I think that, you know, he, he could potentially be defensive rookie of the year um, for sure. You know, yeah. he's going to make an immediate impact in the NFC East. He's got to be the favorite for that right now. But no, oh, I mean, for sure. you, look at, you look at that division that's had, a, a, you know, a long history of prolific pass rushers, right? You got Lawrence Taylor, LT, Reggie White for the Eagles. DeMarcus Ware on the Cowboys, I think he could, you know, maybe be that next generational, you know, um, prototypical NFC East pass rusher. So sticking on the defensive side of the ball, number three, we got Jeff Okuda out of Ohio State going to the Detroit Lions. And I'm not sure if you saw everything kind of with his whole story with his mom and everything, but it just, you know, it seems like the spotlight has been on this guy for a while. And, you know, going to a a team like Ohio State, he definitely performed. And I think his game definitely translates to the NFL. What about, what do you think? I think he's going to be a shutdown corner. He's They're going to have like an Okuda Island for him. I think there you go. he's yeah. easily the best cornerback, probably, the, obviously the second best defensive player in the draft. I think he's probably the second best player in the draft. Um, this draft, you know, the top three all coming from Ohio State at one point or another. That was a big story. But, you know, this guy's going to make an impact just like Chase Young, right right out the gates, um, playing in a little bit of a tougher division, obviously, going up against A-Rod, you know, twice a year, going up against Kirk Cousins twice a year, yeah. um, you know, the Bears, depending on what route they go. But I think he can make an immediate impact, kind of cut the field in half type guy. Um, he definitely, I, I think in the NCAA last year, he had the best percentage um, going up against any receiver, he would shut them down. I think they only caught like maybe 10%, 10 to 15% of the balls. That's a rough ballpark estimate right there. I'm not sure exact st- statistic on that, but he basically, <laughs> he came in, he came in there, shut down that half of the field, mm-hmm. which I think is what opened up 
Damon Arnett's draft stock, which we'll get okay. into later on down the the line. Yep. Um, but he's going to be a very good talent for the the Lions. I'm very, I'm excited for for him. I think he's going to be a really good player. Mm-hmm. Some good insight there. I like it. Number four, we got Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle out of Georgia. Great fucking pick by the Giants right here. I think. Yeah, take it away. You seem excited about it. I mean, they made they finally Obvi- made a smart move. The New York Giants I'm, making yeah, smart moves. Like what? Exactly. Protecting not only your 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 quarterback Daniel Jones, but protecting your best dimes. player on the field, Saquon Barkley, adding another another piece to that offense to help translate. I mean, they this offense is actually pretty exciting. You got Will St- uh Sterling was it Shepherd. Sterling uh, Sterling Shepard, you got Danny Buckets, you got uh, Saquon Barkley, Golden Tate. I mean, they have the players. They need the Evan offensive Ingram. line. Sorry. Evan Ingram. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. But they were saying Isaiah Simmons was coming off the board right here. Made absolutely zero sense to me since they got the linebackers from Green Bay. Yep. I was like, why are we going to draft an inside linebacker from Clemson when you easily have – this guy is going to make an impact right on – starter from day one, obviously. He's a big boy. Um, I think he's going to make an impact for the Giants offense. You know, He yeah. might even propel them to an eight to, to nine game winning season this year. I mean, coming out of the NFC East, it's not going to be that difficult. No, I I agree. I like this pick a lot. You know, you. I feel like it just you know it's kind of comes full circle. You help out your guys. You get a you get an offensive tackle to help out. You know, Danny Dimes, Saquon. In turn, they're gonna feel, you know, the positivity and you know like that like they're getting some help from the front office. And in turn, they're gonna have better better seasons. So I like this move. That's gonna be a competitive division. I feel like. This, this was probably, I would say, out of the first the first five picks, I would say this was probably the best pick, um, for in sense of in the sense of what the team needed. Yeah. Um, I feel like this made them. This was a great pick because nobody expected it. Everybody right. was like Isaiah Simmons going to the Giants. Every every mock draft you saw, this pick wasn't the pick that people said, but when when it was made, it made a lot of sense and yeah. uh, and it. You, you got to protect your assets. Your assets, Saquon Barkley. You put this guy in front of Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley could easily be MVP next year. Yeah, that's – well, here you go. You heard it here first, Tyler. Former Penn State great, <laughs> Saquon Barkley, MVP next season. Yeah, Tyler's got his uh, whole Penn State heart on going for Saquon. But, no, great player. Yeah, I could see him kind of hitting that next level like McCaffrey. Number five. And then we get into the pick I hated the most. Number five. Tua Tagalova, ravioli, tongue twister. Okay, quarterback from Alabama. Going to the Dolphins. Listen, I know we got Mark in the chat, Finns fan. And I don't know. I don't I don't hate it. I I would have rather seen them take Herbert here. Like, you know, Tyler, like I said, I think Same. he was the second best quarterback, in my opinion, in the draft. Uh, but at the same time, not much about it, right? You pick an Alabama quarterback. This, what do you, I don't pick, have much to say about it. This pick scares me for the Dolphins. You have three picks in the first round, right? You're you're rebuilding your 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 team. Trading all you traded Laramie Tunzel for this pick. You traded Minka Fitzpatrick for this pick. I mean, they earned this pick. Obviously, the number five pick. I think yeah. this was a huge reach. Tua coming off of a career threatening injury you know last year and you're gonna pick him number five when you don't know if he's still gonna be the same player you have justin herbert right behind him i mean i i would have felt more comfortable taking justin herbert i think he's gonna translate to the nfl a lot better than tua you know tua is he's gotten injured if you looked last night they showed all of his injuries that he's had since 2018 i think there was like five or six I don't know if he's going to translate that well to the NFL as well as Justin Herbert. I think this was a huge reach. I think Tua is a, a second-round quarterback in the NFL, and the only reason why he went in the first round is the hype. Well, I, I just, yeah, I mean, what? the When he took over and, you know, won the uh, I wasn't, national I wasn't, championship game or whatever? Because, like, even Jalen Hurts, you I feel like you put their numbers side by side this past season. Tua played for Alabama. Hurts played for Oklahoma. SEC is a little bit tougher, I mean, defensive-wise, than the Big 12. But I agree with you 100%. Here's the thing is that 
you know, I wasn't impressed with Tua when he was the starter, when they benched Jalen Hurts and they went straight Tua. I wasn't impressed. The guy had rugs and he had uh, Jerry Judy out of, you know, you know, top 25 wide receivers right there. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, in the draft, they were top 25 players, but I – I still wasn't impressed with what he did, you know. He yeah. that that Alabama team should have won the national championship last year, mm-hmm. and no. they didn't. Yeah, they I lost know. two games. Two, uh, he's not he wasn't as good as as everybody said, and now he's going top five. Doesn't make any sense to me. No, this was this was a confusing pick, and Tyler, I'm sure you recall my infatuation with lefty shooters in the NBA. In, in contrast, I do not like a left-handed quarterback. It just looks awkward. It doesn't feel right. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. The only left-handed quarterback that was good was Kenny Stabler, former Raider great. Well, Boomer Sison wasn't bad, or J- Jaworski. No. But I'm just saying, Mike Vick. Okay, we're not getting we're not getting into that Mike conversation. Vick, yeah, we're not getting right. into that conversation right now. So now, uh, you know, his ears are ringing. We're talking about him. Justin Herbert goes number six out of Oregon to to the Chargers which Tyler that was a big point of our conversation you know in weeks prior on the No Look podcast who is going to be under center in Los Angeles for the Bolts now I guess we have our answer Justin Herbert and you know we'll get we'll get to it later I guess but they also made a nice pick uh you know kind of even further bettering their defensive side of the ball I don't know I feel like I feel like the Chargers might be able to squeak in to a wild card spot. What do you think about that? I mean, being a Raiders fan, you know, division rivals, I think they got right. better. No, I think, yeah, the AFC West is going to be tough this year. Um, I don't think Justin Herbert's going to start right away, and that's fine. They got Tyrod Taylor in, in, in Los Angeles. I think this is a, if I was Justin Herbert, I would be like, not only because he's a Chargers fan, but because this situation is a way better situation than the Dolphins, I would be like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm fine with this. Yeah. You know, you get you get the Chargers who have easily, as we've explained numerous times on this podcast, one of the best defenses in the NFL. You got Keenan Allen that you're now throwing to. Um, Mike Williams. Mike Williams. I mean, he has targets now. Austin and he's going to learn. Or, um, Austin Henry. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. Uh, Austin yep. Hooper and, and Hunter Henry. Has- you got Austin Eckler in the backfield. I yep. mean, they have weapons. So even when they decide to go with him right away, he can make it make a difference. I think have him start behind Tyrod Taylor for a few games, maybe even half the season, maybe even the whole season. Have him learn behind someone who's an, a proven NFL player. You know, Tyrod Taylor's obviously no Mike um, or Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but yeah. you know he's still a good NFL player that's been around for a long time. Um, no, I think this is a great pick by the Chargers, and I think Justin Herbert is very happy he landed in Los Angeles rather than Miami. Yeah, either way, anywhere, if you got picked with those two teams, it'd be sunny nonetheless. But, yeah, I think this is, you know, as far as the football aspect goes. I don't know, though. I, I think Tyrod gets hurt this year. Herbert steps in, is kind of their saving grace. I don't know. I think Tyrod, this is his last year in the NFL. You know, he's he's been up and down. He's done some good things, but he's just – Either way, if you're Justin Herbert, you'd rather be trained by Tyrod Taylor rather than any quarterback that's in Cincinnati or Miami. <laughs> well, who did my, Miami just signed a veteran, right? I think they do. They have Ryan Fitzpatrick. No, because he was on the Bucks last year. I don't remember. I think I think they actually have someone decent, but um, yeah, nonetheless, not a bad pick. Uh, so now we go on to pick number seven, the Carolina Panthers. We got Derek Brown, defensive tackle out of Auburn. Big guy, athletic guy. I mean, you stick him in there on a defense that kind of has a lot of question marks. I think he'll perform. It's going to be tough in that division, obviously, with the Bucks and the Saints. I don't know what the, you know, what the Falcons are going to come up with. But it's a, it's a it's a bland pick, you know. It's it's your honey nut Cheerios. It's your raisin brand. You know what you're getting, right? He's gonna be solid. I feel like good for your cholesterol, and I, yeah, it's just that's all I have for it, really, Tyler. I don't. It's not too flashy to me. Wait, what pick is it? Sorry, I'm looking at Dolphins' <laughs> uh, depth chart right now. Which they, they Dolphins actually made some decent moves this off season, but I'm talking about pick number seven, Derek Brown defensive tackle out of Auburn going to the Carolina to the Panthers. Panthers. 
this was a good pick because it filled in the void that they're now losing with Kwan Short and um, Gerard McCoy. Um, they already have, you know, they signed Robbie Anderson this year at wide receiver from the Jets. Um, mm-hmm. They got, obviously, Christian McCaffrey, the best player in the NFL. Uh, and then, you know, they, they took care of their quarterback needs. I think this is a good pick. I mean, nothing like too flashy or sexy, but I think he, he's one of those guys that could come in making, you know, a name for himself, an immediate um you know, impact on the field. So I guess mm-hmm. we'll see how that, that works out. I mean, he's going up against probably the best quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Matt Ryan. So, I mean, that True, division's yeah. stacked. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Yeah, honestly, when you think about it, Tyler, I don't... None really come to mind off the top of... Oh, they had... Know. My God, man. They had Josh Rosen. They got him from Arizona. I forgot about that. Right, but I thought they brought in another like vet they guy. Ha- they have Fitzpatrick and Josh Rosen. Rosen was Fitzpatrick on there last year? I thought. Oh yeah, he God. was. This dude's got more jerseys than a fucking Footlocker. I don't know. He's been on so <laughs> many different teams. But yeah, okay. Um, so that here's the pick, Tyler Isaiah Simmons, who you said all the mock drafts were putting him in a Giants uniform. He ends up falling to the eight spot, going to the Arizona Cardinals. Outside linebacker from Clemson. What do you think about this? No, I think this is it's the obvious pick for the Cardinals. It's the guy that fell to you. Just mm-hmm. select the best guy in the in the draft um, type deal. Uh, they, as we spoke later or earlier on this with DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray, Kenyon Drake. Their offense is legit. Yes. You know they have a good offense. Their defense is what needs to be worked on. You know they're going to go up against Jimmy Garoppolo twice a year, Russell w- Wilson twice a year. Um, so they, they need to solidify that off that defense. But I mean, let's talk about Cliff Kingsbury's setup though. That dude balling out as a bachelor. If, if I had a house that looked like that, holy shit, I'd be have <laughs> having Brazzers shoot, uh, adult films there. Listen, he could definitely shoot some music videos there. That's for sure. Same with Jerry Jones on his yacht. Two hundred fifty million dollar yacht. Ultimate flex, from. right there. Oh I mean, you, you, you know, really? when when Cliff Kingsbury and Jerry Jones heard this was going to be a virtual draft, they're like, okay, yep, time to time to flex. Which begs the question: How long has Jerry Jones been on that yacht? Like, as soon as he caught wind of this coronavirus, did he just fucking, all right, tell him to pull it up on the on the port? We're we're setting we're, sail. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not dealing with any uh, interaction oh with anybody God. at this point. I need to get. 255 miles off of the coast he's probably somewhere in the gulf of mexico right now dude i feel like a fucking tsunami wave would pull up to that yacht and like bump into it and say oh sorry didn't mean it man my bad he's like the bully in high school that the 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 tsunami would be the nerd that accidentally runs into the bully in high school yeah oh my bad That, that thing is massive yeah no good pick solid pick another you know i i Cardinals are shaping out to be one of those those Low key fire teams in the NFL this year. Yeah, they got they got some good guys. Um, you know, another pick for me. I feel like this is the new wave of you know outer linebacker edge rush guys. You know, it depends what defensive scheme they're gonna run down there in Arizona. But he's a good hybrid. You know, six four two thirty eight. I'm not sure what his forty speed was, but I feel like he's you know good he's in fast. coverage. Yeah. He- they he showed a video of him like going up against uh, Travis Etienne or whatever the running back was for Clemson. Yeah. Uh, head to head, and he lost to the running back by like a hair. He's really fast. Yeah, freaking nature. Okay, so now we go about we go down to the next pick. We got number nine to the Jaguars, C.J. Henderson, a cornerback out of Florida. I wasn't too familiar with him. You know, Florida kind of had an up and down year this past season. But I mean, all his measurables, the intangibles, they look, they look solid. And you know, Tyler, I don't think you can really go bad, you know, picking defensively in the first round. Whose pick was this? This was the Jaguars. Jaguars. I think this is a good pick because they're, you know, filling the void of Jalen Ramsey, obviously. Yeah. Um, getting rid of him, they they need to solidify their defense. Their defense is super young. Um, second best corner in, in the draft um, that they were saying. So I think it's a decent pick for the Jaguars. Yeah, I, and I just like, obviously, if nothing you're the Jaguars. Nothing crazy, nothing sexy, you know. No, and obviously, if you're the Jaguars, there's a lot of holes to be filled. I'm just glad they didn't try to do something crazy. You know, you know, sometimes you get too ahead of yourself, and it's like, we need this, this, and this. You know, and you get fixated on something. And you they start made, reaching. Yeah, they made a safe bet here and, uh, you know, a solid player. 
Um, next pick, number 10, which I declared last night favorite name in the draft, in this year's draft so far, Jedrick Willis Jr., offensive tackle from Alabama, goes to the Browns. It's like it's like Jeff and, and Derek combined. I, I, I love it. It rolls off the tongue. Jedrick, right? I don't, I don't know what you th- feel about I it. I feel Tyler. like you you like it a little too much. I don't think uh, it's a great name. No, okay. I don't know. I like it. His 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 name for short could be Jed. Which I feel like is the he ultimate probably, oaf name. Yeah, he probably wouldn't like that, but I mean, as I've talked about, you know, in weeks past on the show, I think this is Baker's make it or break it year. Seems as though the front office agrees in Cleveland, you know, they get him a little help on the offensive line. Safe pick, you know, another another uh, easy one. They got him. ESPN has him at a, as a ninety three overall grade. We'll see what his Madden grade is popping into. Probably eighties. I would say I would say this is a good pick. I mean, they need it. They lost a lot of linemen this year. They don't really need to fill any voids besides that in their offense. They have probably one of the best skill players, you know, in OBJ, and they got Jarvis Landry, who's a hell of a player too. So they mm-hmm. definitely need to protect you know, Baker, and I think this adds adds to it and, you know, doesn't give Baker any excuses this year. No. We we provided what you need. You have some of the best offensive players in the game. Your defense is stacked. I mean, if you can't win us games, then we need to go on with someone else. Yeah, just add um, another piece of tape on that another, long yep, list of the, <laughs> the Browns quarterbacks. Okay, next pick, Makai Becton. I believe I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Another offensive tackle. Look at back to back tackles going in the draft. Top twelve, you know. Um going to the Jets. I like the pick. You know, you got I you know, they're kind of sold, it seems like, on Sam Darnold at this point at the quarterback position, which I you know, I think he's good. Give him some time to grow, get him some pieces, as long as he, you know, doesn't kiss random girls in New York City clubs and catch mono. Or whatever else, I think he'll be okay. You know, offensive tackle, big guy, six seven, three sixty four. He's got to be a left tackle. Yeah, it looks like it. But I, you know, a good pick, safe pick. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, like you said, nothing sexy about this pick either. It's just what they needed. They needed to to protect Lev Bell. You know, protect their investments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. The Jets are they're one of those teams I feel like every time you you get a player like this that's, you know, great on offensive line. Yeah. He either gets traded or he gets hurt and, you know, <laughs> it's it's tough for the Jets. Yeah. Jets going to Jets. All right, the next pick, you know, it's kind of shitty. We don't need to talk about that. We'll skip it. Um <laughs> Number 12 to the Oakland Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders. That uh, just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Fuck. All right, Henry Ruggs a third, Alabama. Tyler, what do you think? You love it, right? I love this pick. I mean, honestly, though, I wouldn't be disappointed with any of the three wide receivers that went with Ruggs, Lamb, or uh, Judy. Judy. I thought we were going to get C.D. Lamb. He was probably my favorite one out of the draft. But Ruggs, I think I think it makes sense. And the reason – here's here's why I think they, they picked him. I think – I think, number one, they went to Josh Jacobs because he played with both Judy and Ruggs at Alabama, and they said, hey, which of these guys do you think would be a better player for our offense um, and is going to be a better pro in general? And I think Josh Jacobs gave the nod to Ruggs. That's just my personal opinion. I oh. think they also want to match up well against Tyreek Hill twice twice a year um, against Kansas City, and I also think he's going to be a, a different type of caliber player in the offense in regards of what we already have. We already have Tyrell Williams, we already have Hunter Renfro, and we already have Darren Waller matched up on the other side with Jason Witten. So I think, you know, he's going to add a little bit of flair, a little bit of speed. You, you'll definitely see him in the flats um, running those five-yard in routes, you know, to catch and break for, you know, 75-yard <laughs> runs. But this guy is exciting. 25% of the time he caught the ball, it was for a touchdown. I mean, a guy like this is is something yeah. that's very exciting, and it's a classic Raiders pick, fastest guy in the in for a wide receiver. Well, that's, it just makes sense. That's what I'm saying. Al Davis is happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying though. To me, picking picking the speedy guy is like, okay, my quarterback is shitty, so let me get the fastest guy so he can make adjustments and catch up to the ball, or you know, if he's but if listen, he, if, he over, if he overthrows him. 
Derek Carr is the CEO of short passes. Yeah. I mean, that's just who he is. He's not a he's not a guy that's gonna bomb the ball down the field, although he has the arm range. He's I, gonna throw the short passes. I don't know. This might translate into a little Mariota with the RPO. I wouldn't mind. I, I like know. I said, I don't mind the two headed monster with Mariota and Carr. If it makes sense and we're winning games, hell, throw in a third one. Bring in Taysom Hill. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. do it with three of them. <laughs> Jeez, that's incredible. Yeah, no, good pick. Um, like you said, all the you could probably interchange all three of those guys. I thought City Lambs. <laughs> probably the most explosive but you know at the same time now that i'm thinking about it, tyler especially going to las vegas cd lamb kind of seems like that you know lights camera action type of guy i don't know if he would have got caught up in the in the vibe down there in las vegas and kind of lost himself um but yeah we'll lost see in the sauce lost in the sauce just walking around a casino for 24 hours straight missing <laughs> missing his <laughs> rookie orientation but yeah, no, good pick. And following that up at 13, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trading up to get Tristan Wirfs from Iowa, an offensive Great pick. offensive tackle. I mean, Tyler, is this Tom Brady like, yo, it's Tom. Trade up, <laughs> draft this guy. Boop. Easily. <laughs> it I, makes it makes the most sense, you know. Their yeah. defense is already good. Their offense is probably the best in the league, I would say. Now that you got Gronk, Brady, Godwin, I mean, shit, the list goes on. Evans, I mean, yeah. it's crazy their offense. So you need to you need to add up up front and the line because they on the other side of the ball they have pretty much everything. I mean, they probably could have added a corner, but I mean, at this at this point in the draft, the best corners were off the board. This was probably the the pick that made the most sense for them. This guy. Iowa just produces offensive linemen. They're just like yeah. Nebraska, or, or the Big Ten just produces linemen. Go, you need a lineman. Go to the Big Ten. Yeah, no. Drop it like a meat market. <laughs> For sure. And I do want to officially apologize to Tristan Wirfs. Last night when I saw the pick come through, I saw offensive tackle from Iowa named Tristan. I said this guy has to be white, right, Tyler? <laughs> Click on his name. No, he's You're not, not wrong though. He's half white. <laughs> Is he okay? Half right. So I'm half white, half no. Okay, I'm not gonna say that because that sounds like I'm saying something else. <laughs> God damn it! Um, no, good pick though. Good pick, and yeah, I think this helps out the Buccaneers, helps out Tom Brady, and just further makes that division even more complicated. Um, next pick, fourteen, we got Javon Kinlaw. A defensive tackle from South Carolina going to the 49ers. I didn't understand this. I don't know. I mean, they just with well, they just lost Buckner, right? But they also just lost Sanders on the other side of the ball. Yeah, they, but I mean, the defense is clearly what got them to the Super Bowl last year. So they, right, they were like, okay, let me just swap this out with the same team, right? But it's not like they're lacking on defense as much as they're lacking on offense. If yeah. that, I mean that. What you just said proves what I'm what I'm saying. The defense brought you there. They really only lost one player on their defense, really, truly. Their offense, though, the reason why they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs is because they had they couldn't go back and forth with the the Chiefs. Their their offense was too explosive for them. And mm -hmm. I think they should have went with C.D. Lamb right here. I think this is the pick that C.D. Lamb would have made the most sense. Put him with you know Jimmy Guap and mm -hmm. watch sparks fly. Um, but I, I didn't really understand this pick. I didn't think it made sense. This was a reach in my in my sense. I feel like they could have got a way better uh, pick right here. But, I mean, John Lynch has been known to pick really well in the draft, so I'm sure he has some reason to picking him. No, I mean, I, I, I kind of disagree with you here. I think this is a great pick. You know, he's kind of a guy, I don't know if you saw, you know, his story, Tyler. They're saying he could be the next blind side growing up homeless at times with his mom and brother bouncing house to house and he just he's gonna come in the league with a chip on his shoulder and again i sound like a broken record but i'm gonna say you know situation he's coming into a team that just went to the super bowl right he's gonna be in a winning organization a winning mindset and i, I think this guy is just an absolute freak you know from an athletic standpoint so i i like this pick for the 49ers like you said john lynch he knows what he's doing that's why he's a gm in the nfl and we're sitting here talking to a couple microphones on skype but <laughs> about him <laughs> yeah um number 15 here jerry judy wide receiver out of alabama so 
like you said, Tyler, you think he was the second best receiver product off the Crimson I'd Tide? Not, I mean, yeah, oh yeah, second best off Crimson Tide for sure. Um, I think he's a phenomenal player. I think this was a great pick by the Broncos. Again, I would have went C.D. Lamb, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think with needing a wide receiver, any of these three uh, wide receivers makes sense. They're great. They're great. They're phenomenal. I think Jerry Judy's gonna add. You phenomenal. know. Phenomenal. Yeah, I think Sorry, it's gonna suck though having to go up. A, <laughs> it's gonna suck going against Jerry Judy twice a year, um, obviously. But it just helps bolster, you know, a, a target for Drew Locke. They're trying to help him out. Um, maybe get him a little bit comfortable, find you know someone that can get in a rhythm with him. So it's a good pick. I mean, I think C.D. Lamb would have been a better pick here, but you yeah. know you can't go wrong. I mean, do you think do you think the Broncos are relevant in that division now? No. You know, they they bring in Melvin Gordon, right? They got um, Noah Noah Fant. They got last year, obviously Cortland Sutton. You don't think they're gonna make any noise? I think they'll make some noise. They'll win some games. I just don't. Ha- that AFC West division is so tough, man. Um, I think it's it's just going to be back and forth. I mean, the Chiefs obviously they're going to run run the table in the AFC West, obviously. But I think the defense on the Broncos is what stops them from being as good as you would think. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll we'll have to see. Um, uh, and I honestly, can I be of- honest? I don't think Drew Locke is that Please good do. of a quarterback. No, no. I don't. I, I just I'm not excited when I hear his name. Like I don't think he's as good as John Elway thinks or as some of these experts think. I don't think he's that good. No, well we talked about it whether it was last week or the week prior, Tyler. They're you know, they're kinda next in line to having that tape on quarterback jersey right. behind the Browns. All the guys, Osweiler, Chad Kelly, fucking I don't even know, so many guys. Uh Paxton Lynch. <laughs> Like what happened to Paxton Lynch? Is he still just growing out that mustache, that weird porn mustache? I think he. I, I was just about to say, you know, maybe he moved to South Florida and started doing shooting some porn down in Miami. Jeez, I yeah. mean, nothing wrong with that. We're you know no, all not. for that here, obviously. Oh hell yeah! If I if I uh, had the facilities for that big man, I'd be doing the same thing. So you know, but. <laughs> Okay, next pick, another cornerback. We got AJ Terrell, not related to Terrell Owens from Clemson, going to the Atlanta Falcons. What do you think about this pick? I think it was a decent pick. I think this is the pick that the Raiders wanted to make at nineteen. I and yeah. all the and I feel though it's still a reach for at cornerback. Mm-hmm. I don't think AJ Terrell was as good as as they were saying, but I mean the Falcons. Again, just like any of the NFC East team or NFC South teams, yeah, they don't need offense. They need defense more than anything, you know, to go up against the 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 three headed monster. I guess we could say with uh, Teddy Bridgewater, Tom Brady, and Drew Brees. So, I think it helps yeah. their defense, obviously. Rightfully so. No, um, I mean, I looked at his numbers. He had like two interceptions last year, but I think they're kind of labeling as more, uh, you know, a physical corner. You know, a, a man-to-man press tackling type corner, maybe like a Mike Hughes out of UCF, who's on the Vikings now. And yeah, I don't know. I, Falcons, I, I'd give it like a C. You know, just a basic. I think they could have gone somewhere else to do a better pick. I think they could have reached for someone else and done a worse pick. But with that being said, finally, the guy we've been all talking about, C.D. Lamb goes to the Cowboys. And Tyler, I did not see this coming. Amazing pick. I did not see this coming. But now the Cowboys offense just got pretty darn Holy good, fuck. if you ask me. <laughs> right? Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, Amari Cooper. And they also have Michael Gallup, who kind of came on and stepped up in situations when oh, no. Amari was out last year. So, wow. I mean, a lot of this falls on Dak Prescott this year. And for all the criticism the Cowboys got you know for franchise tagging him and not paying him enough money you know giving giving Amari the money this is the the year he's got to prove himself right he's got the weapons he's got the talent I mean if they French if he does well and puts up numbers they make the playoffs and they franchise tag him again then that's that's just outright downright wrong because my question is is how are the Cowboys going to Cowboy this year 
That's my question. They got all the pieces. They they have the offense. I, I think the biggest thing that they need to find is offensive linemen. They've, mm-hmm. They lost, I think, three of them in free agency and retirement. So I think that's going to be a big, big hole for them. But their defense, strong. Their offense, even stronger. Um, I'm just trying to find a way to, to figure out how they're going to to lose it this year, especially playing in the <laughs> NFC East. The biggest thing was, and I don't know if you saw this, was yeah. C.D. Lamb when he got drafted, his yes. girlfriend <laughs> took out his phone and then he snatched it back. <laughs> Did you see that his girlfriend is ex-girlfriend of Trey Young? Yes, yes. And Tyler, you know what we call that? What do we call it? I ain't saying she a gold digger. I'm a knee. <laughs> but Trey Young to CD Lamb, I mean, yo, homegirl, secure the bag any way possible. I I can't hate on it, you know. But yeah, no, good pick for the Cowboys. He's gonna be exciting. Move on. Um another another Dolphins pick. They had I think 30, 30 or thirty one first round picks this year. And now they go offensive tackle, Austin Jackson out of USC, great first name. Um not biased at all. Decent. I just like the name Austin. And no, I mean, you know, USC has produced some good linemen over the year. A big guy. And I think it's a solid pick. You know, trying to trying to help out Tua or whoever they put under center this year. Obviously they're gonna need some protection, so No, I think this is a smart pick. Again, nothing really sexy about it, but they fill in fill in the needs of what they what they have to do. Um, protecting the quarterback is obviously, you know, makes you a lot of money in the NFL. So I think it was a, a really good pick by them, given who was on the board at the time. Yeah, no, and I just, one thing I brought up last night was like, I love to see trends, you know, in the NFL sports. But how, I mean, how many offensive linemen? There's like seven. I'm not going to count it up. We'll say seven. And only one running back squeaked out the last, you know, number 32 in the first round. Where in years past, you know, you see a Barry Sanders being Saquon. number one. <laughs> yeah, all these guys. And there's like three, four at least running backs taken. So it's funny to see how the trend is moving in the NFL. But moving on, got another Las Vegas Raiders pick. Damon Arnett out of Ohio State. Tyler, <sighs> you, you mentioned earlier you think that Okuda kind of... What you made this? You made he made Damon look better than he is. Is that what you meant? Or? I'm not mad, Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. You, we knew that we needed a cornerback. Obviously, we're not going to get someone of Jeff Okuda's talent. Um, I don't like this pick at all. I think this is probably one of the worst picks in the first round that I saw. I saw this guy. He's not even a top fifty player. He in. In the position rankings for cornerbacks, he's not even top five. Yeah. There was there was two players ahead of him that are still on the board, mind you. Uh, Trevin Diggs from Alabama, and you got Jalen Johnson from Utah. Hmm. I look at this pick, and I, it's a reach. And, you know, Mike Mayock was happy about it. I just don't think that – I mean, unless they know something that I know, I don't think this was a good pick. And I think, like I said, it was a reach. They wanted AJ Terrell probably because he was from uh, he was from Clemson, right? Uh, and, they, and they and they AJ Terrell, yeah, he's yeah. from Clemson. They they really obviously Mike Mayock has a fatuation with Clemson players, yeah. Um, and drafting them, Cleveland Fair or Hunter Renfro, for instance. Um, but it's, this pick just doesn't make sense to me. I don't think he's as good as they think. I think there was better players on the board. Hell, you could even pick this guy if you really, really liked him in the second or third round. Granted, we don't have any second round picks. We only have a third round pick coming up. So I'm just not thrilled with this. I would honestly give this pick a D minus. Oh, okay. Harsh feelings there from, from and he's Ra- from Raider Ohio Nation. State. I fucking hate Ohio State. <laughs> well, that's because you're a Penn State fan. I, I I've always kind of liked Ohio State. Uh, I I would have to agree with you. I think there was be- definitely better players at this position. If you were like, oh, we really want to take a corner here, I feel like you could have gone somewhere else. You know, Jeff Gladney was taken at 31 by the Vikings, I think was ranked higher. Typically, you can't go wrong with an Alabama product on the defensive side of the ball. But I don't know, like, you know, Tyler just goes back to obviously you and I aren't experts. Um, we're the next best thing, I'd say, but I don't know. This one doesn't make sense to me. We'll see how it pays off. Moving on to the next pick, number 20, 
My second favorite name in the draft, and I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly, we have Clavon Chazon. It just, dude, it, it, it sounds rolls. like a Key and Peel, uh, Key and Peel get right there. <laughs> right, yeah, dude. I just, I just picture him <laughs> walking up with like a a pimp cane, and he's got the he's got the fur robe on. But no, um, offensive or outer linebacker, offensive outer linebacker, no, <laughs> outside linebacker from LSU, traded from the Los Angeles Rams. You know, on the Jaguars, I don't think I said that yet. So Jaguars, they go corner, then they go outside linebacker. I guess what are they going to do? Don't they have Josh? They have Josh Allen at linebacker too. Right. So to 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 go opposite of him. I dude, I, I guess they're just going to hand the ball off to Leonard Fournette five thousand times a season because they are not worried about the offensive side of the ball at all. As far as the player goes, you know. B plus, A minus right there. As far as a need, I'd give it a, a, a C minus, D plus. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I, this pick doesn't make sense to me. Maybe they, were, they weren't they were sure. Um, <clears throat> but Jags are going to Jags. Jags are going to Jags. We're going to leave it at that. Tyler, next pick, number 21. Probably the worst pick in the draft, in my opinion. Jalen. So, okay, well, I'm going to say first, in my opinion, Jalen Ragor, uh, not related to Ragon Targaryen from Game of Thrones, <laughs> wide receiver from TCU. I mean, what? <laughs> Ju- Ju- Justin Jefferson had to be the, like, right? You had you had the top three. Yeah, right. And then Justin Jefferson's got to be that next guy up in the, right, in the exactly. next tier. I mean, I have never even heard of this guy before. 5'11", 206. I don't know if they're thinking he's the next A.J. Brown with that kind of, you know, running back at the receiver position, break tackles. But shit, man. I I'm I feel bad for Eagles fans because I know some, some shit got broken in Philadelphia, Tyler, last night when they made this pick. You, you know if this, if this was a draft that was actually at Radio City Music Hall or Las Vegas like they wanted it to be, yeah. this would be the biggest boo draft pick in the whole entire first round, I think, if I had to make a guess. This pick absolutely made no sense. Like you said, I don't even think this Raygor guy should have even been a first-round draft pick. He <laughs> he should have been second or third. Yeah. And uh, this was a giant re- – I mean, what, are they trying to fill Nelson Aguilar or something? Like, worst receiver in the NFL? Like, yeah. I mean, granted, he's a Raider now. I have to like him, but I'm just saying, <laughs> this pick doesn't and make an any Eskimo sense. And an Eskimo brother. And an Eskimo bro. <laughs> hey, shout out. Um, hello. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey. hey. Um, yeah, no, just – I don't even want to talk about it because it makes my brain hurt talking about it. But then, on the you know the next pick, the Vikings take Justin Jefferson, who I thought was you know the fourth best wide receiver in the draft. Solid pick, you know, good guy, best available. Replacing Stephon Diggs. Replacing Diggs. Um, I don't know if it helps Tyler because guess what? You still have Kirk Cousins throwing the ball, and <laughs> I mean, the, the Kirk Cousins. Like, he should petition to play Monday and Thursday night games for the whole season because I feel like playing on Sunday, he's such a religious guy. He he can't think about anything other than Jesus, and his he just gets caught up in his own head, and then he goes out on the field and he throws twelve interceptions. So I don't know. I think this was a great pick. Um, I think they went best available at this point. I think they should have went for defense, but you know they didn't have anybody that really jumped off the board to them. Maybe, you know, I, especially playing in the division that they do. I don't know. I I just feel like you get rid of Stefan Diggs just to replace him with Justin Jefferson. I feel like I'd rather have Stefan Diggs, you know. But yeah. granted, he wasn't gelling with the Vikings and whatnot. Justin Jefferson, he was a beast at LSU. I think he's. I think he. In my opinion, I thought he was going to be top three. Wide receivers, but you know, uh, Judy, Judy or Ruggs, who, however you want to say that, um, squeaked in there above him. I think, hmm. but I think it was a great pick. I think the Eagles should have made this selection, but <laughs> without a doubt, I don't, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I mean, a guy a little bit bigger frame, six three, or excuse me, I'm clicked on the wrong guy, six one two o two. I feel like he would have gelled pretty well with Carson Wentz. But anyways, I digress. Moving on to the next pick, number twenty three. As I mentioned earlier, the Los Angeles Chargers 
go defensively, take Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma. Great pick. I was looking at this guy before the draft, hoping the Packers might, you know, if he fell to him, or might make a move for him. They need to fill Blake Martinez. Um, obviously, they went a different direction, and we'll, we'll get to that pretty soon. But I think it's a solid pick for the Chargers. I think he can come in and be an instant impact. No, I think I, I agree 100%. I mean, the Chargers need to focus on defense, help help that defense out a little bit more. Um, you know, I think the, the Chargers easily have the best defense in the AFC West, um, for mm-hmm. sure. Hundred percent, and they're just solidifying that even more. I mean, granted, he's from Oklahoma. Oklahoma's plays in the Big Twelve. Big Big Twelve's known for not having defensive players, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, like you said, I, I like this pick. I think it made sense for them. You know. Yeah. He's. A, I mean, he's he is the second second ranked position for inside linebacker. So they gave him an eighty nine. I would say that's a hell of a pick in in the twenty third for the twenty third pick in the first round. Yeah, no, very solid. Okay, moving on. Next pick, 24, to the New Orleans Saints out of Michigan, a center, uh, Julius Cesar Ruiz. I'm just kidding. There's, there's no Julius. There's just Cesar Ruiz. <laughs> but, uh, I don't. yeah, I don't really know. I'm not familiar with the Saints' offensive line, per se. I know they lost Jari Evans a few years back. He went to the Packers. But, okay, I mean, you know, obviously they have the skill players, so it makes sense to me. To go ahead and get a, a lineman, you know, protect Breeze, 6'3", 307, you know, big guy up there up front. So, uh, solid pick, B+. Plus. No, I, I, I agree 100%. I mean, he's the number number one ranked position player for the center position. You know, getting him this late in the draft, I think it's another, another great pick. I mean, the Saints don't really have that many needs that they need to fill. You know, maybe their their defense a little bit more, but I think this this guy was just standing out to them. Uh, you know, you got to protect Breeze. He's pick, getting old. Pick me, pick you got, me. <laughs> you got yeah, exactly. And then you got to you got to protect Alvin Kamara, probably one of the best uh, running backs in the NFL. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Um, I just accidentally clicked off. So next pick, number twenty five. 49ers had another one, and this time, Tyler, they do fill the void at the wide receiver position. They take Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State. That sounds like an anime name, like something you'd see on Naruto. Well, Tyler, as I, I was just going to say, not related to Ryuk from the anime Death Note, so not to be confused with that. Six foot, 205, overall grade of a 90, let's see, above average route runner. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, they have Debo. I'm not sure what the deal is with Marquise Goodwin. You know, they have George Kittle, obviously. So I feel like he could come in and definitely get some snaps. Yeah, and I remember thinking about this this morning. The reason why they picked this guy, um, or they picked the the player that they picked earlier in the draft, is probably because this guy stood out to them, and they thought, you know, we could probably get him later on with our second pick. So let's go defense first. You know, might not be able to get this guy later on. Decent pick. I mean, he's no C.D. Lamb like they could have potentially gotten earlier in the draft. But um, I think it helps fill in a, a void that they definitely have, a glaring void at wide receiver. So, you know, Arizona State produces some decent wide receivers. That Nikhil Henry came out last year, or Nikhil mm-hmm. Harry. Yes. Um, show, balled out with the Patriots a little bit. So I guess we'll see how, how good this is. But this next pick is is my favorite of the draft, just to see your reaction. <laughs> oh, this is, this is your favorite. All right. Yes. I just I just like to see um, how, how, how you feel, um, how you feel, how you feel, 25 sitting on 25 mil. Um, Jordan Love, t- number 26, Jordan Love to the Green Bay Football Packers, baby. <laughs> well, Tyler, um, this may come as a shock to you. But I found out at the same time, you know, you and everyone else did when it happened on live TV. I probably mistakenly wasn't invited to the war room Zoom online between you know the owners and all the other people in the front office. But yeah, like I said, I'm watching this live last night on stream, and I, I you know I'm talking in the chat. I see oh Packers moved up, they're gonna get Queen from from LSU in her line, inside linebacker, and then I see Jordan Love. You know, I mean, I won't get too into it. We talked about it at the beginning, right? I think he's the best quarterback in the in the draft, in my opinion. Biased. 
maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but I said that before the draft, so definitely not. I get, I get it from a football standpoint, and why you have Rodgers, you want him to groom the next heir to the throne that is the Green Bay Packers. My only beef with it is moving up, and I don't know what I didn't even see what the trades were, but I'm not sure why they felt the need to move up to draft him here. I feel like they definitely could have taken him at 30. I mean, who else is going to take him? You got the Seahawks, Ravens, Titans, maybe the Titans. Anyways, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think they're. I think they're right now with Tannehill though, with the Titans. But well, yeah, but if, you know they definitely they just paid Tannehill all this money. You know they they still need a backup. But I don't know. It's it's. I'll give it a B. I'm I'm just for me. This is more so emotions. I I see it from a football standpoint. But, Who would you have uh, rather them drafted right there? Patrick Queen, inside linebacker okay. from LSU. Which I mean, we'll I talk if, about. I it, think but... if, I agree. I think if you're gonna trade up, you need to to f- trade up to someone that's gonna change your organization. Do you think Jordan Love's gonna be that guy that changes the organization for the Green Bay Packers in the future? I think he can be for sure, but, but like that's that's where I see like through both sides of it. I think he can be that guy, especially learning under Rodgers. You know how Rodgers learned under Favre, but at the same time, this is almost like saying, "Hey, we're you know we're flipping the the sand timer upside down. We're putting a we're pu- putting a cap on Rodgers' career." I don't know. I feel I feel like yeah. Because if you is... think about it, what if what if Rodgers plays like he like Tom Brady plays, where he's gonna play until he's forty one, forty two? Well, that's the Jordan thing. Jordan Love's not gonna stick around that long. It's like well, picking someone to to groom him to replace someone else in the nfl yeah and i mean i think what four years is the rookie contract so that's pretty much saying all right rogers we're giving you four years i'm a little upset for you know first instinct i'm upset because look at they made it to the nfc championship tyler unfortunately you and i were watching the game together it didn't work out in my, our favor but <laughs> well <laughs> our our as the packers organization right me being an owner but is what i was referring to I feel like like why it's it's a recurring theme. Why not help Rodgers? They've proven they can win now. They paid you know Preston and Zadarius Smith all that money. The defense, the defense made them who they were last year. Why not? Yeah, they lost it. Why not? Look at I'm looking down the list. Isaiah Wilson, taken three picks later, offensive tackle from Georgia. I like I don't understand why they couldn't gone that route i think spend- patrick queen would have made a way made more sense for the packers with losing who they lost in the in the the defense they lost blake martinez they yeah. lost the, who was who the other linebacker that they lost kyler, kyler fackrell they lost him i mean they needed to replace that and tyler, they did not i think i'm accidentally flipped on my speak it into existence powers last night because <laughs> at the beginning of the stream you know, early picks, the draft had just started. Obviously, the Packers hadn't, go- hadn't gone yet. I said, I want the Packers to make an aggressive pick this year. I want them to reach a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally, I said this. I'll mm-hmm. have to find the clip. I said, I want them to reach. They've, you know, they've made the, the you know, bland picks in the past, just picked who was there and was the best <laughs> available. And I also said, I think Jordan Love is the best player in the draft, the best uh, quarterback in the draft. So I might have accidentally spoke this pick into existence. If there was one thing to speak into existence, that wouldn't have been it last night, my no, friend. No, I, I could think of 1,800 different things that I would choose to do before that. But I guess, you know, you can't control your powers. I'm going to have to go back to the covenant and do as some my, more training. As my man Amine would say, or definitely butchering that, reel it in, Austin. <laughs> no, Amine, you got it right. Um, Yeah, reel it in. But next pick, we got at 27, Jordan Brooks with a Y out of Texas Tech. Outside linebacker, went to the Seattle Seahawks. That's like the worst the worst spelling of Jordan. Don't ever put a Y in it. Just awful. Well, yeah. Jordine. That's what it <laughs> reminds me of. That, but also, it yeah, it seems a little bit more feminine. So maybe if it's a girl, you get away with it. But yeah, either way, not a huge fan. Uh, Tyler, I don't. I, we're going to have to fact check this. I don't know. 
if there's ever been a back-to-back Jordan pick mm, in the draft in the first round with different spelling, mind you. Jordan Love, Jordan Brooks. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe this is saying, okay, we're probably going to we're going to lose to Devion. We need to fill in a hole on the on the edge rush. Yeah. So, but I don't know. Bland. I think it was a little B-. bit of a reach. They could have easily gotten Patrick Queen right here, who had been a way better draft pick than this guy. I don't know. T- t- I I look at his, they graded him a 70. I mean, shit. C's do C's do get degrees, but C's don't win you uh, Super Bowl championships in the NFL. So I'm not really no. thrilled with this pick for the Seahawks. I think they could have gone with Patrick Queen a little bit of definitely a better player. But well, segue into it because Patrick Queen goes next to the Ravens. This is probably the pick that helps the Ravens beat the Chiefs right here. Hmm. This guy right here is a playmaker. He's a he's gonna probably come right into Baltimore and start right off the rip. D- mind you, the Ravens signed Calais or Galeas C- Campbell this year from Jacksonville. They have him up front. They have mm. him behind. They have Patrick Queen behind him. I mean, this Ravens defense is scary now. The, the Ravens flock is gonna be. I don't know. Does this pick make the Ravens defense stronger than the Ravens offense? You tell me. It's scary that we're even contemplating it, Tyler, because their offense. You know, a team that's been always a defensive-minded squad put up a lot of points last year behind Lamar Jackson. You know, like I said earlier, I was hoping the Packers would get this pick. And when they traded up, I thought, I, you know, I would have bet the house on it. That's who they were going with. But I look at this guy, Tyler, and I, I can't help but think someone of his talent playing in Baltimore – you know, second coming of Ray Lewis, maybe. I don't know if I'm hyping him up a little bit too much. Mm. But I just feel like he's going to come in there, be solid. And then you said they just signed... Uh, Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell. I mean, you're looking at like a, a Ray lewis Haloti Nada type yep. duo that they had back in the day. And that's they were uh, one of the best teams in the NFL when they had that duo. I would so, say this is probably outstanding. one of the, I would say this is probably the smartest pick of the NFL draft right here. Um, does, the, this, the, does this make the Ravens the number one team in the AFC now? It might. I mean, I mean, it's them and the Chiefs, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think this pick is the smartest pick because of given how far it was in the first round. You know, twenty eighth being a later pick, um, and just picking a guy that's an absolute beast. I mean, LSU last year probably had one of the best defenses, hence why they won the national championship. They shut down Clemson completely. Yeah. Clemson was scoring 50-plus points a game pretty much every game. Um, this guy was at the forefront of it, and I think this was such a smart pick by the Ravens. I think this really helps them come out of the AFC North, maybe even come out of the AFC, you know, your Super Bowl champion. Yeah, no, great pick. And, you know, you kind of think of chain reactions. This is almost a direct direct cause of, you know, they couldn't stop Derrick Henry last year. You know, who would they have on the inside when Derrick Henry was just running between the tackles and slashing him in the playoffs, and they say, "All right, that's not happening this year." You know, we're gonna we're gonna take Patrick Queen here at twenty eight, and yeah, great pick. So now twenty nine, two. You know, good segue on my part. The Tennessee Titans <laughs> offensive tackle out of out of Georgia. We got Isaiah Wilson, eighty seven. Yeah, small flex. It's just that's just good. I have good natural journalism, Tyler and mm, relax it, it's it's well you know i am relaxed so you relax <laughs> um yeah no solid pick uh you know if Tannehill's the guy why not try to get players around him that can protect him and keep his knees intact for at least one or two more seasons, i'm not even so. looking at this pick as Tannehill. i'm looking at this pick from a perspective of derrick henry you need to protect the best player in the NFL last year who probably could have easily, you know, how many yards did he run for? Like 1,500? Absurd amount of yards. Um, he this almost guy, said two, I think, right? Or- yeah, probably. I mean, he was literally your, the Titans offense last year. Um, you know, help him, help him out a little bit. Secure, you know, maybe maybe the the AFC was AFC South division. Mm-hmm. I think this was a, a very smart pick by them. Uh, what was he? He was rated a eighty-seven. You yeah. know, six, He was the sixth best offensive tackle. But shit, they had one, two, three, four, five. 
I mean, he was the best offensive tackle on the board right there. Yeah. So they ha- they had all those offensive tackles, best player on the board for offensive. So offensive line makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. And here we go again. Dolphins with their... Holy shit, say fifth, this name five times fast. With their 58th... All right, I'm going to try it, Tyler. <laughs> Noah Igbinogin. Igbinogin. Mm. Noah Igbinogin. Better than what I would Noah say. Noah Igbinogin. Yeah, that sounds like it. Okay, cornerback from Auburn. Terrible pick. <laughs> Why do you say that? They're replacing Minka Fitzpatrick right now, and they're replacing him with this guy who Wait, got Minka who has was a safety. Well, I mean, they're, they're for secondary purposes, basically. Um, well, the, this well, they guy got to leave too, but you don't think he can come in and be like a decent? I mean, he's he's five ten, one ninety eight. I feel hmm. like to me, this pick is like. The way the Decent. NFL defenses are transitioning to more of a nickel, you know, this is like a cover right. tight end. Well, this guy, eighth overall, you know, position ranking for cornerback. Like I said before with the Raiders, that you have a guy like Diggs out there from Alabama. You got Jalen Johnson from Utah. Why aren't you picking this them before this guy? It doesn't make sense. Overall rank of a 60. You could have easily got this guy in the second or third round. I think this was a giant reach. Again, mm-hmm. unless the Dolphins are seeing something in this guy that I don't see, I don't think this is a really good pick. Um, I think they could have got something a lot better for their value right here. But Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think overall rank of a 60 just kind of sums it up. I, I was just kind of busting your balls a little bit. I don't think... I don't know. It's a so-so pick. We'll I mean, see the, how it turns the, off. The, the next pick with Jeff Gladney from TCU, cornerback, right, right. that the the Vikings got, that was a a better player, a better caliber player than what the Dolphins had gotten. I just think the Dolphins in this draft, you had so many opportunities to do something special, and you you flopped. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd say Gladney is probably the better corner. So you could say the Vikings got good value. But at the same time, I mentioned earlier, Tyler, they have Mike Hughes, who I think is like, you know, the spikes on his cleat away from being a certified midget. No offense <laughs> to my, to my, uh, you know, the short kings, short kings out there. But what I mean, to me, you need a, you need a big body physical guy on the outside, just with the way the trends in the receivers, you know, they're playing against. I mean, in that division, Tyler, they're playing against Kenny Galladay, Devontae Adams, now Devin Funches, which, you know, I'm not saying he's a premier receiver, but he is a big body guy is the point I'm trying to make. And um, who else we got? The Bears. You know, Allen they, Robinson, former Allen Penn State. Allen Robinson. Great. There are a, lot of, a lot of tall guys, you know, mm-hmm. so I don't really understand this. I mean, they could have went after Diggs again. Uh, I, I'm saying this. Diggs is probably coming off the board three picks in today um cornerback out of alabama 6-1 i just think it makes a lot more sense than going after a 5 guy like you said but again i think it was a better pick than what the dolphins made so <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't i don't have much to say about it but we can close this out now with the 32 the, or the 32nd and final pick finally tyler we got a running back i honestly wasn't sure if there was going to be one selected in the first round and quite frankly, I, I don't know if I am a little biased because I do. I like those Ohio State running backs. I thought Dobbins was the best running back in this class. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire, I believe, hyphenated. Speaking of a Bayou goes, name right there, coming out of LSU. Right. It's, you know, that's spot on. And, you know, he goes to the, he goes to the Chiefs, which. Uh, interesting you know they, they've they kind of had a rotating door damien damien williams right um darren williams williams the williams the, the williams two-headed williams monster brothers. i mean they, they were good yeah i don't know this guy i feel like if he produces definitely there's there's snaps there to be had what do you think i mean <clears throat> obviously andy reed said that he liked this guy better than Brian Westbrook. I mean, they're of similar stature, short oh. running backs. I just don't think he's a guy that's going to come in and you know make a huge difference. I think with the uh, the high volume of passing passing attempts that they have with Patrick Mahomes, this guy coming out of the backfield might add a little bit to that. He must be really fast. I mean, uh, I don't know. I feel like there was better running backs on the board if you're going for a running back like the Chiefs were. 
You know, you got Swift out of Georgia, and like you said, Dobbins um, out of Ohio State. I just, I'm not sure about this pick. I, again, I feel like you could have gotten a better value pick right here. Someone, you could have probably gotten him maybe in the second round, but you know. Okay, they're, they're, another. Yeah, sorry, John. I, no, I, no, yeah, I got yeah. a little excited. Another thing, what happened to Jonathan Taylor? This guy was supposed to Oof. be the <clears> next <throat> fucking Barry. They were saying Sanders. Ron Dane. Yeah. I mean, like. I don't understand. He had one bad year, and this guy falls to like the the fifth best running back in his class. Like he, to me, this guy has first round running back talent. And now we'll see if his name is even called, you know, in the second round. Yeah, they're saying he could potentially be a third round pick. I mean, I don't get it. I don't either. Looking at it overall, I think there's a lot of good players coming out of the, of the second round tonight. A lot of you know, yeah, you know, potential players that should have went in the first round. I think uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who's going to draft my guy, Itor Gross Mateos, um, out of Penn State, uh, defensive end. You know, I guess what we could say is, who had the best first round? Who do you think? Um, I mean. I'd say just like for value and you know where they got them, it's hard to go against that Patrick Queen pick for the Ravens at twenty eight. Just the value of the player and that far back in the first round. What do you think? I I agree a hundred percent. Like I said before, um, I think he's gonna make an instant impact on the Ravens. Um, I think though, if I had to say. Best overall draft other than the the Ravens. I don't know. I think I think the the Vikings came in and and really balled out. What you know they got? How? Listen, they got they got Justin listen, Jefferson. They got Justin Jefferson. They filled a void on on cornerback with Gladney, who's not a bad player. I, I look at it. I, I'm pretty impressed with what they did, given the the late round value picks that they have. Um, I would I would have said I would have said the Raiders if they didn't draft freaking Damon Arnett, but you know well, we so, had to go and f- Raider it up, of course. Yeah. And also, I mean, I was I was bashing the pick that the the Forty Niners had with defensive tackle, but I think they also had a really good draft too as well. So in contrast, who do you think or what do you think was the worst pick? Worst pick? I gotta I, go with Raygor. I agree. I think. <laughs> I, I agree. I think that's a terrible pick. I'm going to go Tua, number five. Oh, okay, when, yeah. When, when I saw the Dolphins pick him, I thought they could have easily gotten, like you said, Justin Herbert or, or Jordan Love. I think those guys are way better quarterback than Tua. I'm scared. He's coming off of a, a debilitating injury. I mean, I think this is probably the – they could have gotten a way better pick, someone that's going to come in and do a lot better than he will. I just – Alabama quarterbacks never translate well to the NFL. They never have. Um, I mean, besides Joe Namath, but that was back in the '60s. Uh, right. Yeah, I, it's just I look at this pick. I'm like, dude, the Dolphins probably had the worst draft. I think this first round, they they had the most picks, and yet they somehow made their team way worse than that they were. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know how that's possible. They had, I mean, they just filled up a whole practice squad right there with their first round draft picks. Right. But yeah, no, I overall. You know, interesting for what it was being remote and uh, overall talent wise, you know, not a lot of sexy picks, but I think the depth of it, this was a pretty good draft class. Um, you know, we're at the hour and a half mark. We, you know, we do, we had an extended edition of the No Look podcast. We're about to get into our bracket portion. Uh, I appreciate everyone who's tuning in right now. I hope you enjoy the content. Hit that like button if you're not already following us. Tyler, we decided. For this week's bracket, we're going to do things we are most looking forward to doing once the quarantine is up. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen with you. And change on the OBS to the remote screen. And there we go. So, I threw it. You don't, you don't know my picks yet. <laughs> you don't know my picks yet. So. I, I like of, that first round matchup right there. I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. So overall, the number one overall, this was your pick. I agreed with you. Going to the bars, 
and verse the 16 of my pick bobbing for apples. I mean, that's just something you can't do right now, Tyler, when you're on quarantine. You don't want to spread germs. Is this bobbing for apples? Like, I think bobbing for apples or... (laughs) Like the kids game. Oh, okay, okay. The completely unsanitary kids game that they had us do when we were growing up when everyone would just go into this giant bucket and try to get an apple in their mouth when everyone's slobbering all over it. Um, I mean, this was just kind of a kind of a chuckle for me, but I think we know the clear answer. Going oh, to yeah. the bars. How bad do you miss going to the bars? Well, I can tell you my bank account is really happy that I, the right. bars aren't open right now, but um, I miss it. I just the the ambiance of it getting fucked up, having to Uber home. <laughs> yeah, man. Waking up the next morning with a splitting headache and checking your bank account, not knowing. Well, what let's the fuck let's think about it. Right now, I would be in New York um, if it wasn't for the coronavirus. So me and Austin would definitely be hitting up the bars for sure tonight. God damn um, it. Probably probably have this podcast together um, <laughs> for the for the second time since uh, Key West. But um, fuck, man, I miss it. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely <clears throat> miss it. Just like you said, being out there, and you know what they say—you don't know what you got till it's gone. It's like, oh, I'm getting sick and tired of the bars, but now it's like, fuck, I miss paying over overpriced drinks and getting super paying three hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So the next matchup, probably the most closely related matchup. We got mm. we got your. Your choice of getting your hair cut at number eight versus mine of dapping up your barber Oof. at number nine. Now, Tyler, I, I kind of was... Can already... we just change that to dapping up your boys? I mean... Well, no, because this is what I want to say. You, you don't get that, like, that, like, bravado feeling of after you get a cut and it's from someone you've been going to for a while and it's like, all right, I'll see you stay up. And then all the walk-ins are sitting there by the door. It's like, oh, shit. These guys are boys. Like it's legit. I'm over here looking like a scrub. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess. Like where's the I just, thr- where's the thrill in getting your hair cut anymore? I I think get the thrill in getting your hair cut is when they're fading you up on the sides. Obviously not taking any off the top, but that feeling that you get when the the razor is hitting your your hair follicles and your skin, and it just feels like almost a, a massage. I miss that. I see. I don't like the act of getting my hair cut. I have. Like, I love a it. Fucking skin issue i've had to go to the dermatologist i get like acne on the back of my head so sometimes if i got a pimple they'd be fucking dicing me up with that fade and the zero clipper wow. just just gives i mean me for the 95 percent of us that that enjoy getting our haircuts i think i speak for all of us that that fade right. feeling it just feels incredible sounds like we gotta go to a coin flip my guy you're saying dapping up your barber is yes miss that more than getting your haircut yes there's a- that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. If you click anything besides getting your hair cut to move on past this round, I'm going to exit out of this Skype so fast because that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, what? So you, how many different barbers have you had in your life? This, this tells me that you're, not, you. that you're not a consistent, reliable customer. I've had a few. And let me explain. I have my barber. I have his number. And I always get my barber's number because I, t- I tell people this all the time. The barber is probably the most important person in your life when it comes to tipping someone. And the reason for that is because if you're not going to tip your barber a lot, they could easily fuck up how you look. And how you look is pretty important because you can only make a first impression once. So uh, I agree with you. Barbers are are a crucial part of your life. But I'm I'm saying if I'm – I'd rather receive a haircut from my barber rather than dapping him up. So coin flip. My guy. (laughs) (laughs) I'll let you pick it. No. What? <laughs> this is a terrible coin flip, I must say. We're wasting a good coin flip on this. Right, fuck you. If it was dapping up your boys, fuck I would... Fuck you, I get I would, the next one. I get right, my trump card over your next one. <laughs> Deal. I mean, fuck we both you. know the next the next one's getting overshadowed by going to the bars. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Oh, right. Jesus. So now this we is a got... tough one right here. Eating out, which Tyler said open to interpretations of a restaurant and or um, performing partner. Cunnilingus. <laughs> ha ha. Uh-huh. Number twelve, which is one that I picked. I'm surprised you didn't. You you had going. You you had playing sports, which I, I guess kind of ties into that. But going to the gym, Tyler. That's 
that's close for me because <laughs> eating out kind of ties into the whole like social aspect you know hanging out with buddies grabbing a drink getting some food this one's where, easy for where me where in retrospect going to the gym there's you get no motivation as you know like going to the gym there's nothing more that i miss than going to the gym right now during quarantine so we're, um, in, we're in agreement then. Oh, we're, we're in agreement 100%. Okay. If I had to choose between going to the gym and eating out, I would rather eat at home for the rest of my life than working <laughs> out at home. Um, working out at home has to be the hardest thing to do because you have to be very creative to get a similar workout or even close to it than you get at the gym. Yeah, like I saw your video earlier for the promo. You only did 1,000 curls. I, you know, on the record, would have done 1,001, so... I mean, I saw the I saw the insane games cam. I had I couldn't. I mean, the ladies love seeing me work out, but the thing is, is I got to shoot that promo. You know, I, I would I could easily. I had a few left in me. A few a few pumps left in me. Getting that pump to take the to take the OnlyFans vid for later. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> OnlyFans.com uh, slash Tyler J Hayes twelve. Uh, you can you can catch me on there. Or if they type that in, it's like a fucking porn star. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, yeah. Yeah. Um, so number or the next matchup, thirteen versus four. Two of my choices. We got making filthies, which is another name for, you know, the birds and the bees making nasty. getting down, making cummies, you know, clapping oh, cheeks. Sh- and <laughs> what? And clapping cheeks would have been my would have been my saying. All right. Well, number thirteen, helping old ladies cross the street, Tyler. Because as a good samaritan that's something i practice on the regular is um you know right. aiding aiding my elderly but um i'm gonna have to go with making filthies i'm sorry to all the old ladies out there uh get, get a fucking walker or something because the boy you <laughs> always gotta get his nut <laughs> i agree 100 percent. i think <laughs> this whole entire uh, quarantine has really ruined uh my single game my single life as mm-hmm. you could say um you know i was on a hot streak and you know now can't come in within six feet of another person without them getting scared so right right you're worried about catching something and you know and it's not an std yeah it's not an std um next up number three concerts boy do i miss them versus 14 samples at whole foods those samples at whole foods do be fire but they they slap different there's nothing better than going to a concert, especially of some of some degree of which outdoor concerts. Okay, so Tyler, I'm, I was gonna ask you. Obviously, Tampa Bay resident for what four, five years? Five years. Five years. Would you prefer a venue down there or Spac? Um, I just gotta go with Spac, just because there's so much history. Obviously, you know, my first concert was there. Yep. Um, I think the venue down here is very similar to SPAC. I just think SPAC has a better, instead of the, the grass going down like SPAC does, yep. you know, into the, into the amphitheater, mine goes up, the grass goes up. So it's not, it, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. That I, so what are people like down the hill trying to look over people? Essentially. Yes. Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah, no. And a couple of years mm-hmm. back. One of my tweets that popped off uh, where I recognized that SPAC was voted the number one outdoor concert venue in the country. So that's quite Which, impressive. I didn't understand that because if you look at it from an aesthetic, the the venue in Colorado, the Red Rocks, just seems a lot nicer than SPAC for an outdoor venue. Yeah, well, maybe the, the voters in Colorado were a little too high on the day the census <laughs> went out and they, they didn't <laughs> fill it out. Um, but now, now we got the next matchup volunteering at homeless shelters versus playing sports um obviously the volunteering at homeless shelters was something i put something i do regularly unfortunately wow, I bro. Can't. <laughs> really really shooting at me as a individual i was just bullshitting playing sports so what did you mean by this like pick up basketball golf pick up basketball yeah well, golfing well, well golf you can do right now though so yeah, but primarily I was I was just getting back into pickup basketball. Obviously, can't do that anymore. Um, so I, you know, going out enjoying, you know, rubbing up against other other boys, man, other dudes, dudes being guys, guys being dudes. Um, you know, bringing you're back guy, your you're the guy that playing pickup at the park with random people takes your shirt off and makes someone d you up all sweaty, bare body. Oh, bro, I'm I'm number <laughs> one. <laughs> and I'm I'm always the guy that has the highest motor too. So I'm the guy that, that is the try hard. It's just who I am. It's Big Tim didn't raise no bitch. I'm not coming no. in there and not giving my hundred percent. I can tell you that. 
Yep, the ultimate competitor. So okay, we'll go. Sorry to the homeless. Get a home. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Get a <laughs> we'll job. Put, yeah, they... we'll put uh, playing sports out there. So seven <clears throat> versus ten. This is a pretty good matchup. Your pick of going to the beach versus my pick of shopping. And now when I say shopping, obviously like grocery shopping is you know an essential part of life. They're so open, but I just mean like clothes shopping, Tyler. And I know mm. you and I love some good retail therapy. There's nothing like just going out, especially when you don't need anything, right? And, and right. you come across. You always off. find the best deals when you don't need anything. Exactly. And then when you're in a when you're in a pinch, you can never find it. You end up paying full price. Exactly. But I don't know. You obviously like the beach more than I. I am a pale Polish person, uh, a, a Caucasian from Fine the pale mountains ale. of Caucasus. <laughs> Uh, yes, a fine <laughs> American pale ale, and I burn quite easily, so I'm not a huge beach guy. I do enjoy it every now and then. The only the only thing is, I I love shopping. I do. The only thing I'll say is is I can do it online, and I do most of my shopping online. Right. So I feel like going to the beach is a little bit more of something that I miss because actually, if I'm being quite frank, I'm doing more shopping than I have ever during this time. Hmm. Okay. And I'll um, tell you this: I'm not going to the beach. <laughs> no, well, f- well, the the beaches are open though, technically, right? They're open, but they're not allowing people. They actually just open them for workout purposes only, which mm. I makes no sense to me. You so, still, but that's still, Florida for you. Yeah. Florida gonna Florida. So you're staying on the on the safe side and just waiting it out. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Smart choice, probably. Um, yeah, I'll just say just for the reason of something like you said, you can online shop, which I thought about, but. I thought it was a decent one to throw in there. Uh, no, I agree, hundred percent. Amazing, amazing choice by you, Austin. You you, you put out a, a, a beautiful list. The committee did a great job this week, I must say. Um, again, we're just putting out bangers, um, bangers for brackets. The the committee is doing a great job. Ooh. So, banger, banger brackets. I might we might be on banger brackets, there. bro. Oh no shit! No little podcast banger brackets. I think shit. banger bracket Fridays. <laughs> Oof. Ooh wee! We we'll have to trademark that. All right, number two, we got Tyler's choice of traveling for his 15. Spin the, spin the bottle. Spin the bottle. Spin the, spin the bottle. fucking bottle. <laughs> oh, this is just another kind of funny I put in there along with bobbing for apples, you know, shit we used to do back in the day. Definitely something you should not be doing now. But at the same time, Tyler, traveling. I mean, you know, you're just talking about, you know, countrywide, worldwide, right? You, you can, you're not really supposed to go out and about right now. Right, and I think it sucks, especially now. Like I aforementioned, I should be in New York, but you know, yeah. can't really travel that much, so can't go to New York. I think this is my biggest one right here. I think traveling was my uh, my number one, but I think it, the the committee agreed that going to the bars was was the ultimate number yeah. one. Oh, for sure. Um, I would say traveling beats spin the bottle by a landslide. I would compare this game to. Uh, maybe the the Browns back in 2008 versus the New England Patriots uh, hmm. blowout. Yeah, no, this is quite lopsided. Um, <laughs> we'll put traveling up there. Now, as we typically do, we'll go bottom up. So we got the 10 versus the Ooh. 2. Traveling versus going to the beach. I would have to lean towards traveling. I do. And I, I'll, give you a, I'll give you the nod right there for that. Okay. Um, I just, yeah, I enjoy it. It's tough. Not, you know, I'm a peacock, Tyler. You got to let me fly. Not only am I caged up in my room, I'm also caged up and confined within this state and, you know, area code. I can't really do much. So I definitely miss traveling and it seems like you agree with me. Number, or, uh, yeah, so number three, concerts for six playing sports. Ah, I miss, I miss me a good concert, man. I mean, SPAC, we talked about it. They already... They already closed the season down, so no concerts this year, unfortunately. Um, which, okay, brings up yesterday. I don't know if you watched a little bit of it, Tyler, but Fortnite had an event with Travis Scott where they did an in-game concert. 15 million pe- people were viewing it. Damn. Insane. And it was pretty <clears throat> sick. Fortnite, I'll give them credit. They've done, they've done quite well with their in-game events. And they had just the overall, the visuals of it, Tyler. If you didn't see anything of it, you'll, you'll have to go look it up on YouTube. It was aesthetically pleasing, to say the least. I mean, and, TikTok's been doing that, too, where they've been having um, concert events with 
not like major artists like Travis Scott, but you know, artists that are, they're trying to to promote. I think this is going to be a great time to have events like that, though, where mm -hmm. we can't go to concerts, so let's bring the concerts to you at home. You know, some live performances. They don't Born slap as hard. Yeah, they don't <laughs> slap as hard, but fuck, they do the trick sometimes, especially if you got you know a honey over in your bed. You know trying to go from first to second maybe third maybe you hit a home run but i'm gonna have to go concerts right here man i would yep. rather go to a concert any day of the week than play sports um mm -hmm. i'd rather i'd rather sweat a different way if you know what i'm saying Ooh, uh -huh. i agree <laughs> so now uh talking about sweat oh. verse 12 making filthies and going to the gym tyler oh, jesus this is tyler. this is the heart this is the hardest one. <laughs> what? Why did I make this matchup? It was going to come down to it eventually, probably. Fucking pumping iron or pumping cheeks. Is this is this the first coin flip we have? I, I can't pick, honestly. Yeah, I, I, can't. I say coin flip just because, obviously, there's half-assed solutions to getting satisfaction, you know, in relation to both of these things, none, neither of which live up to... You know what? I'm going to vote. Because I think, you know, you got to be assertive sometimes in your life. And I, I've been so indecisive my whole life. And I'm trying to turn a new leaf 2020. Yeah. Um, you know, being more decisive. I'm going to say making filthies over going to the gym. Okay, well, I was just going to say, um, think about it this way. Which would you never... Okay, if you had to choose between the two, um, that you, you could only do one for the rest of your life. Have sex or go to the gym. Obviously, we know what we're choosing. So right, yep, making there you filthies, go. moving on. Um, God damn I'm it, glad Tyler. we could do that. That was God. beautiful. You know what, Tyler? I I didn't have quite the matchup of like you know in, in weeks past. I've kind of had similar. You know, we had the LGBTQ bracket last week. We had you know comedy versus comedy. Um, I didn't really have that this week. It was kind of random. But as I say that, look what we have here. I think we're about to have a clean sweep of one through four in the final Oof. four. Going Which to the is bars, a first. It is a first. Going to the bars versus getting your hair cut, easy, right? Uh, easy. And now it does not get easier. Going to the bars. <laughs> it does, in fact, get harder. Going to the bars. <laughs> Ooh, it do get harder. Going to the bars versus uh bumping uglies like i'm kind of more looking without forward one to... you can't have the other sometimes in some cases right. well here's where i look at it like i'm kind of more so looking forward to going with the to the bars with the boys but at the same time if we're thinking about it which i don't know if it translates if you could only do one you know one of the two for the rest of your life <laughs> i mean you you are right i mean going to the bars does get old after a while but think about the bangers that are coming out after quarantine going to the bars. Holy shit. Oh but man. Think about the bangers making making nasties out of quarantine with the with the girl that you've been FaceTiming for the past month, you know? Snapchatting, texting, Zoom ing. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> Only fanning. <laughs> Only fanning. Oh man, I, yeah. Hinge has like this thing where like want a date from home and then you click it and it's like, oh, send a video. Oh, or something. But, oh, man. This might have to be the first coin flip. What do you think? No, we got to go. No, nope, we got to We got to pick it. Yeah. Goddamn sex addicts over here. Yep. <laughs> sex you know addicts. This was the <laughs> ultimate matchup. Sex addicts and alcoholics. And I yeah. guess sex just won. So, sex sells, baby. Concerts and traveling. Another tough one. I... As far as just like, I don't know, same same type of thing. I'm kind of more so looking forward to concerts, but if I, you know, if I had to pick one to do for the rest of my life, it'd be traveling. Right, and I think to 2019 to 2020, right in that that end of the year, beginning of the year, I was doing a lot of traveling, and I had a lot of plans of doing more traveling, and I didn't really have a lot of plans of going to concerts, but I do do concerts while I go traveling, so. Right, it's kind like of, one kind of the other. synonymous. Yeah, and I also think it doesn't matter because we've probably already made our minds up as far as what is the number one overall. So yes. for just <laughs> for entertainment purposes or whatever, I'll go traveling and Tyler on three, two, one, making filthies. 
Clapping cheeks. Clapping oh. cheeks. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a little delayed there. I had yeah. to think of what one I wanted to go with. I was either <laughs> going to say making nasty, bumping cheeks, bumping cheeks, clapping cheeks. Pound and pissers. There's a million euphemisms we oh. can say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> just damn, yeah, bro. Uh, I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> I, I use that in select scenarios where I. I feel like people... You have to be pretty comfortable with someone to say yeah. pounding pissers. <laughs> have the same fucked up sense of humor. All right. Having sex, baby. Talking about sex, Let's baby. Let's talk about sex. Which, I mean, I feel like that's synonymous with all the brackets that we've had on Banger Bracket Fridays. You know what? We tried to vary away from, you know, a sex topic. But at the end of the day, it just made its way back. You know, it's like it's like nothing in a butthole and you get her pregnant that... The semen knew where it had to go. And it's like that classic thing. Wh- wh- <laughs> we're we're just young, dumb, and full of cum. <laughs> ah ha ha. Well, ah uh-huh. ha. That was a lot of fun. I mean, two hours just like that, Tyler. We we were rambling on. I feel like we had some good points every now and then. And you know, this just proves we got some stamina in us, baby. Oh, stamina. Especially after this, I mean, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have the juggernaut of all juggernauts. <laughs> you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna produce enough semen to put out a small house fire, man. It's gonna be like a fucking fire hose when this shit lets loose. So, <laughs> I'm sorry in advance to whoever the culprit is on my end, at least. Um, oh, <laughs> I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, Tyler's got him lined up. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. All right, you don't know that one, John. John Faggity. Line them up, knock them down. Yes. All right, we're starting to fucking ramble like no other. Stick around. 7 o'clock, we got the... Uh, what is Insane it? Games Live. Insane Games Live. So see if see if the guys can catch a dub, right? They're doing Warzone, I assume? Uh, probably. Probably. Stick around, yeah. I know they got one the other day. Tom clutched up. But all right, until next time. It's been real. Boy, yo soy. Your man, goddamn. Love ya. Later.